Hello, Morim here. In today's video, I want to show you the upgraded assassin unit capable of taking out dodge tanks, high damage strikers and flyers before they can engage your heavier units, especially your cavalry. This time I focused around upgrading previously shown troops, shuffling around units, as well as employing new strategies and tactics in favor of different skills and items. This time I wanted to focus around destroying fast, squishy units that threaten my cavalry, especially rogues, flyers and mages. Those are eviscerated in an instant with this setup. You also earn quite a bit of extra coin with this one and have incredible mobility with the availability jump. Flyers are very common in the later half of the game always threatening your cavalry, so having something in your repertoire to counter that is crucial. It's also just fun to watch, seeing enemies constantly miss, they're struggling. You cannot help but look at the amazing backflip skills of your rogue after getting constantly attacked over and over again. And we get to enjoy using the dirty gambler's coin without ever thinking about the penalty of accuracy. This was not true with Ouch in the party. Now if you like what I do and want to support me, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you have not already. I cover all sorts of RPGs, beat strategy, C or RPG on this channel in the form of extensive guides. So thank you very much for supporting me and let's dive into the video. First, what is an endgame squad? The game throws 5 minute squads at you around the end of Elheim, but that's more around the mid game point. The endgame starts with Albion at the end of Pasteria, so that's what I'm going to look at. I also only want to use named characters without hires as much as possible. Next we're going to take a look at my strike unit, this unit is a high damage unit, it takes out flyers, it takes out dodge tanks, it takes out any enemy that has a high evasion chance and this one deals amazing damage while also countering a lot of regular units that are going to try to hit you but just cannot hit you because you have a high evasion chance. So for our frontliners we have the regular rogue in Travis, we are going to use the bandit sword but you can also use a different sword like for example the Notus sword but this sword is currently on a different unit. It provides you with evasion, it provides you with initiative and AP but the bandit longsword is still enough the evasion and the additional gold that this unit is going to earn is going to be amazing either way. For the pendant, use the sapphire pendant for plus 2 pp, otherwise use the lapis pendant for plus 1 pp and you have the lucky coin for crit rate and evasion as well as the royal scar for more evasion. That's 50 evasion which comes in very very handy. So 145 evasion is a sweet spot, basically no enemy is going to hit you, especially with 4 PP chargers with evade. You also have sneak attack at the start of the battle which guard seals enemies with the highest defense so we can do something against those. Then we have the passive steal ability at the front so right at the top. This one is only going to trigger if we have one or less PP. Then we have shadow bind which is a debuff ability which blinds enemies which also lowers the initiative and evasion of enemies. It deals basically zero damage so that's why we are going to use the long sword, the bend long sword because we don't deal any damage anyway. And then for the purpose of having this ability because we can upgrade the AP for this unit we have active steel and for this unit specifically if I ever run out of AP I'm going to use shadow bind all the time so that's not going to happen because we only have 2 AP but if you upgrade this one to 3 AP you need a passive steel at the lower end so you're going to use this one if there is no AP left for active steel or shadow bind. Then we have the werefox which is going to use the helix spear which is providing us with the penetrate ability lowering the physical defense which is going to boost our damage with the sword master, snow ranger and sniper because all of those are going to deal physical damage. Then we have the passive hold to inflict passive steal. We have weakness hunter, so after an enemy is debuffed we're going to follow up with this ability, specifically versus armor targets. We have the shadow pursuit ability which is going to inflict blindness after an ally attacks. It is quite strong. And then we have basically the evade ability just a little bit better if we are at night. We're going to employ the royal scarf, the mistletoe which this unit comes with and the lapis pendant for more pp. For the spear you can also use any spear that's providing you with evasion but I haven't found any spear to be honest so we're going to use the helix spear. For the sword master we're going to use basically the same setup except a little bit of a tactic shift. Keen edge versus scouts, impale to finish off targets with 25 or less HP. If we defeat the enemy we get 1 PP back. Then we have the keen edge ability to execute enemies below 50% health. The meteor slash to not waste AP but if we run out of AP we're going to use the keen edge ability anyway. We get additional AP by using charge impetus giving us 50% 
on crit strike damage. We have haste and strike targeting scouts and flying units and parry if we are hit in melee range. The snow ranger comes with a very basic setup, king's bow, carnelian pendant, lapis pendant, warrior medallion and we have the mystic arrow versus armor targets and the sonic shaft ability targeting the highest initiative. This ability deals additional damage based on the target's initiative. We have the triple counter countering three enemies with one shot and we have the eagle eye ability to always hit our hits. And lastly we have the sniper, now instead of ouch we're going to utilize the dirty gambler's coin which will buff all our allies in their back row with a buff increasing our attack damage, our crit strike damage and debuffing our accuracy. However, all the units in the back row will have either very high accuracy or are going to use abilities that are going to buff them with a true strike. So it's basically an amazing buff for the back row. Otherwise we have a bow with a plus one AP and evasion as well as initiative. We're targeting the back row with our row shot, but only if there's three combatants. Otherwise we're going to use the dual shot targeting the lowest physical defense for two or more enemies. And otherwise, if there's only one, we're going to prioritize the lowest physical defense flying unit. Otherwise, we're going to hit whatever is currently on the battlefield. The aerial snipe is only going to be used versus flying enemies. And then we have the eagle eye. Now this sums up the video. If you liked what you saw, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you have not already. You can also support me some more by joining the channel membership, which will allow me to keep making videos. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye. すればいい。おとなしくしなさい。こっちだ。これならどう。目くらました。行くぞ。腕が鳴るわね。この一撃貫きます。決めます。